story. And when he took over the reins of leadership of County Number 047, Governor Mike Movi Sonko branded himself as Mr. Fix-It, who was out to rescue Nairobians from cartels that had taken over control of the county. Three years later, the self-declared Mr. Fix-It is on the way out of the topmost leadership position in Nairobi, leaving in his wake a mess that partly informed the national government's decision to take over the control of the country's capital. Little was known of Mike Mbovisonko until he stepped on the political scene in a Makadara by-election in 2010. <laughs> Presenting himself as a man of the people, the flamboyant politician easily captured the support of Nairobi residents. From his dressing style, haircut and approach to leadership, the man who was nicknamed Sonko became a darling to many in the city. That became visible in 2013 when he easily trounced ODM's Bishop Margaret Wanjiro to the city's senatorial post. Sonko's rise and rise was inevitable when he declared interest in the county governor's seat. He won against Peter Kenneth in the Jubilee nominations, and when elites wrote him off against the incumbent Dr. Ivan Skidero, Sonko proved them wrong by clinching the seat with an overwhelming majority of votes. I shall diligently discharge my duties and perform my functions. Things looked rosy for the governor as he pledged to fix the capital city, but three years on, he has seemingly left it in a fix. I am now the acting president of the Republic of Kenya. Jubilee had paired Sonko with Poli Kapigade, a successful figure in the corporate world. It seemed he was meant to tame the erratic Sonko. I shall at all times, when so required, faithfully and truly give my counsel. A year later, Igade resigned citing frustrations and lack of trust by Sonko. The governor also frustrated Peter Karaoke seconded from the house on the hill as county secretary. Suspensions and sacking of county staff became synonymous with his stay at City Hall. In all this, no explanation was given whatsoever. Nairobi simply became a one-man show. It was his way or the highway. Party after party after party after party. <laughs> Sideshows and theatrics employed by the governor seemingly distracted him from the core duty of delivering services to Nairobi residents. Broken infrastructure, blocked drainages, poor garbage collection, congestion due to the Matatu menace, and persistent crisis in the health sector. Claims of corruption and mismanagement of public resources popped up. The alleged loss of 357 million shillings was the beginning of his downroll. Arrests and arraignments by EACC followed. <laughs> He would then be barred from accessing his city hall office, and despite efforts to have that reversed, the end appeared nigh for the governor. His dramatic arrest at the Voy airstrip, an illustration of his dwindling political fortunes. This was a man who previously called the president and put him on loudspeaker. He sought to unseat Speaker Beatrice Alachi, succeeding for the better part of the year. <laughs> <laughs> a court ruled that she resume her position. Sonko would later work with her to reject Abdi Guyo as majority leader. This too was a success. Guyo and Elachi now sit on one end of the seesaw, and their collective weight may see his governorship at an end. Sonko spanned chances to nominate a deputy until it was too late. His latest attempt was thwarted by the court. Tuesday evening, Sonko ceded control of crucial county functions to the national government under the watchful eye of no less than President Uhuru Kenyatta. Among senior officials, the deal covers the next two years. He will have to contend with a corruption case in court and a Nairobi Assembly impeachment motion due Tuesday next week. As he hurtles downwards from his lofty perch, the bell surely tolls for Sonko. Chamutai Goin, Citizen TV, Nairobi.